One of the best parts about bass fishing is the learning process. The gear, the lures, the lakes, the weather, it all has so much to do with how many fish you catch and how well you do as an angler, which is why you've got to learn it all. But out of all the things you can learn in bass fishing, I think three main themes are worth your time to learn. And if you already know them, consider this video as a great reminder. What are those three main bass fishing themes? My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better anglers and catch more fish, no matter where you fish, from a bass boat or from the bank. My channel is for everybody. So if that sounds like something you're into, hit the subscribe button. Before we hop into our three main themes, this video is sponsored by AFCO Clothing. If you want the best and most comfortable fishing and lifestyle clothing, AFCO is the company for you. Y'all can use code TRF2022 to save 15% on your order, and that can be on anything. Rain gear, cold gear, women's apparel, short sleeve shirts, long sleeve sun shirts, AFCO has everything, even fishing gloves. I've been wearing AFCO clothes for I think over five years now and I'm telling you guys they are the most comfortable, the most sun protective and just the best fishing clothes in general. So like I said if you want to use code TRF2022 that would help yourself in your pocketbook and would help this channel continue to grow. In this video I'm going to break down one of my most recent kayak fishing days that well didn't go so great, at least to my standards. But this fail of a day reinforced the three themes that every good angler knows. So let's start with theme number one, and that is to be prepared. Oh man, the Boy Scout motto, a motto that I'm very familiar with from my time in Boy Scouts. And yes, I am an Eagle Scout. Thought I'd take the time to flex real quick. But this simple phrase to be prepared goes so much deeper than you think when it comes to bass fishing. On this kayak day, I was unprepared in multiple different ways. So let's start at the beginning. So I get my kayak in the water, ready for the day, and my Aunt Ginger on the bank says this. I don't need a paddle. I replied to her that I didn't need a paddle because the kayak I have has a pedal drive system. And so ordinarily, I wouldn't need a paddle, but as you'll see, that's not the case today. As my wife and I took off from the bank to the main river channel, I came across a sandbar. So this was the first time in my day that I had to take the pedal drive out of my kayak to get over that shallow sandbar, which isn't really that hard. It's just two or three clips, take it out, super easy. After a quick drift over that flat, I was back to putting the pedals down. But as you could tell from my eyes, I could kind of tell that it was getting shallow again fast. Uh oh, I gotta pull this up. And then this happened. I gotta pull this up. Ah! Woo! The fails begin again. I guess on these shallow sections, I'm just gonna have to drift. I gave her my paddle. That was a mistake. What? Gosh, dang it. What a mess, what a mess, what a mess. What a mess. So as you can probably feel from those clips, the first part of my drift was very, very stressful. This part of the river was definitely much shallower than I was expecting it to be, and I was definitely not prepared. Of course though, if you're fishing on a brand new body of water, you're not always going to be fully prepared because there's only so much research you can do. But I had been on this river before, and so I should have known from past experience how shallow it is and to be better prepared to leave my pedals up and not in the water, at least for this first stretch. Not being prepared mentally led to not being prepared physically and almost breaking my equipment. Luckily though, nothing broke on my kayak's pedal drive system, and so I was ready to apprehensively continue my float down the river. But it was at this point when I realized I was even more unprepared than I thought I was. Do y'all remember a second ago when I gave my paddle to Hannah for the day? I gave her my paddle. That was a mistake. Yeah, that wasn't very smart. Listen to uh, what I have to say here about my preparedness. I'm realizing that I am vastly unprepared for today's expedition. So y'all are gonna see firsthand how this goes because I gave Hannah my paddle because I didn't think I'd need it. Turns out when you're river fishing, you still need your paddle because when you, I gotta pull my steering, uh, not my steering, my, my pedals up to go over some rapid areas. And when you do that, I've lost all control in terms of direction, which is not good. So we are really gonna hope today that everything goes right. And if not, 
you might see me in the water. So I looked around my kayak to find something I could use as a paddle, and the only thing I could find was the plastic cover for my pedal drive system with a cup holder in it. So because of my unpreparedness, I definitely wasn't ready for the river, and I had to jerry-rig my way to safely make it to the exit point. But that was not the only fail of the day. I had so many more, including hooking a big fish without pliers on a treble hooked topwater. That's unsafe. Wanting to change lures, but not having any scissors and only having braided line, that was dumb. And basically everything important for bass fishing, especially on a river, I forgot at home. So the moral of the story here is that no matter where you are bass fishing from, the bank, the kayak, the bass boat, the john boat, it is always better to do more research and bring more gear than you probably need, especially gear like pliers, scissors, a paddle, because stuff can and will go wrong on the water, and it's best, as the Boy Scouts say, to be prepared. Moving on to theme number two, and that is you should never, ever, ever, ever leave fish to find fish. What this theme means in practice is that if you are fishing a certain area or a type of structure on a body of water and you are catching fish, the fish that you want, whether you're in a tournament and you're catching big ones or you're just fun fishing and you're catching a whole bunch of fish, you never ever want to leave that place that you're having, whatever success is determined for you, you're having success, you don't wanna leave that to go try to find success somewhere else because 99% of the time, that's not gonna work and you're either going to return to that spot and the fish are not gonna be biting anymore or if you're in a kayak river situation and you're, and you're floating down current, you will not be able to come back to an area that has fish after you've already left it. And on this kayak day, I definitely did not follow that theme. Let's start with the first fish. Oh, got one, got one, no way, no way. Holy cow, holy cow. First fish, first smallie, first smallie on the patroller. That was so fast. Now see, I've gotta watch out because I've got some current here. It's gonna blow me into some trees. Keep pedaling backwards, get in the net, get in the net. Yes, sir, boom. Look at this stinking fish, y'all. Okay, I'm shallow enough to power pull. Hey, look at that, beautiful. Look at that right there three pounder to start heck yeah no complaints there let me get my phone out and get a picture that was a lot faster than i thought it was going to be so after that first fish i made a few casts into the general area while i was power pulled down on my kayak but i immediately power pulled up after making like five or six casts and continued to drift down current, leaving the area that I caught the first smallmouth in. I didn't even try a separate lure. I just tried the same lure, and after not catching one after five or six casts, I said, see ya, getting out of here. That was not smart. I just made a silly decision and kept moving down the river to try to find more fish. Don't do that. As I continued drifting down in the same pool, this happened. On the old gosh darn jig, which I'll be throwing. Got one, got one, yes, oh my gosh. What do I got? What do I got? What do I got? No, he pulled off. Dang it. Oh, he was so strong. He was a big smallie. Man, they're in every like calm area. Shoot. I got somebody's red line. Who still uses red monofilament? That's my question. And yet after losing that fish in the same pool as the first bite, I still didn't power pull down to make more casts in that area. I was distracted by catching the, the monofilament line and getting it off my hooks that I just totally blew past that spot. Strike two for me. A few hundred yards later in the same pool of the river, again, between the two shallow sections of water is a pool, I caught another fish. Got him, got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, wow. They're big in here this year. They're big. They're big. Dang, what a beautiful smallmouth. What a beautiful smallmouth bass. Holy cow. Trying to get us out of the uh, current area. Come on in here. Yes, sir. Boom. Let's go. I'm going to take us over to a shallower. Actually, I'm going to take us over here and power pull down. Whew. And we've hit and we're here. It's a little hectic. It's a little bit hectic. Look at that smallie. Oh, wow. Look at that small mouth bass. I know we're not in the shit in the sun right now, but that's almost a four pounder. And yeah, nice fish. But once again, like an absolute dummy, I did not stay in that area. I was power pulled down on the bank out of the current in the eddy where that fish was, or at least in the same general vicinity. And I continued to blow past that area just after a few casts. And with no success, I said, I'm going to go find more fish. 
I, I can't believe that. I wonder how many of these eddies actually do have fish. You just didn't get to them. Probably all of them. And I soon realized that after that fish, the first pool I was fishing was over. I went into a second pool, hoping to find more success. And within that second yeah. pool of the river, I didn't get a single bite, which led me to this realization about river fish. All right, so I've concluded that area we just fished wasn't that good. I think in rivers, you have you know pockets that are better than others, little calm sections that are better. And this was just not a good section. That's how it goes. Probably should have fished a little harder in the sections that had fish. I'll know that now. But hindsight truly is 2020 because I knew that about rivers. I was just convincing myself in my mind on that day to keep moving because I thought there were more fish to be caught. But you should never, ever, in a million years, leave fish to find fish. As my day progressed, my mind was not in the right place. I was getting frustrated while I was fishing pool after pool after pool and not getting any bites. And I'm sure you guys out there understand the frustration. When stuff doesn't go your way as an angler, you start to get really mentally stressed and that's what happened. I'm just glad I caught one to finish out the day. Oh gosh, got him, got him. Yes, 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 yes. Take him out of the current, take him out, take him out. Okay, okay. We got him. We got him. He doesn't even know he's hooked. What do I have? Please get in the net. He's only got one hook. He's only got one hook. He's only got one. Get in the net, buddy. Get in the net. Get in the net. Yes. Oh, no. Gosh. Oh, got him. Whew. Oh. Oh, man. Three pounds of molly. But talking about mental stress, that brings us to my third theme that every good angler, especially the professional anglers, know. And that is that sometimes you've got to take a break. Now this tip definitely has more applications to life than just bass fishing. When you're being a naughty kid, your parents will put you in timeout to give you a while to think about the decisions you've made. When you're playing basketball and you're missing jumper after jumper, you're shooting threes from half court, your coach is probably going to take you out of there to give you a minute to cool down and hopefully play better the next time you go in. Taking a quick break in bass fishing is no different. Anytime that I have had a bad day on the water, I really tried to take a few minutes throughout the day to stop fishing completely, put my rod down, grab a snack, grab a drink, refresh my body, and give my mind a break. Because sometimes you just need to get out of the, the, the fishing cycle, the, the grind of trying to find where those fish are gonna be, to give your mind a rest. And oftentimes, that's when you'll think of something a little bit different to try, or it'll reset your body and your muscles to be more accurate, make longer casts, and of course, make less mistakes. And all of that leads to catching more fish. You look at pro bass fishing tours, like Major League Fishing, they take two period breaks throughout the day. Two, one, lines out. All right. And all the pros that I talk to talk about loving the period break because during that break, they get to unwind from the stress of the score tracker. They get to eat a snack. They get to retie a few lures. And that 15 minute break gets them prepared to go back and compete even harder in the next Three, period. Two, one, go. All right, let's sail it up. And on this kayak day, I was starting to get frustrated around lunchtime. Oh, come on. Why? Hannah actually had to remind me to take a break. So we power pulled down, we got some snacks, we got some drinks, and we just took a quick second to kind of evaluate what I did throughout the morning on the river and hopefully go off and do things better in the afternoon. Now, I wish I could say that that break right there absolutely turned my day around and I started whacking them. I started catching four or five pounds smallmouth, but sadly, that's not the case. I was definitely less stressed than I was in the first half of the day than I was in the second half. I was making more accurate casts. I was being a little more patient, but I didn't really catch any more fish besides that last one. So hours and hours of more fishing and I get stuck again. This is, this is unbelievable. And a few more fails. Oh gosh. We are now uh, stuck on a rock. Led us to get to the exit point. Man, oh man, that was a wild day. So now that I've gone over these three main themes, I bet you can see that they don't just apply to bass fishing, but they also apply to life as well. And that's what I love so much about this sport. As much as I hate having tough days on the water, they are good for you as an angler because they will allow you to think differently 
about certain fishing situations, which of course will lead you to fish bodies of water in a new way and catch more fish going forward. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and drop a comment below. Both of those help my channel tremendously. And if you wanna see a kayak uncut that did go well, two and a half hours of crazy fishing, I will leave that up here in this corner and another kayak customization build video, I will leave that right here. The longer y'all stay on my channel, the better it does on YouTube as a whole. And so I'd appreciate y'all watching one of those two videos. As always, it's a pleasure. My name's Tyler and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.